Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like eight o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is Ryan Renault in the No Ryan Renault right here. Up and coming writer and podcaster and all of that. I, um, Mr. Jamie Basco was the person that brought brought him to me, and we've been talking a lot about hockey. And I was like, man, you got to do a video. We got to we got to do we got to do some hockey. So um, that's exactly what we're going to do. You know the series we're doing right out there, boys and girls. We're doing uh, all the teams, what they did in the off season, and how it projects for them in the future. And uh, we've been going in Perlo alphabetical order, which is basically not alphabetical order at all. Sort of is. Sort of is. And now it works. It works. we decided that we were going to jump on Pittsburgh today, right? Right. The Pittsburgh penguins talk about some of the moves that they made uh where how that's gonna look how they're gonna look in the future maybe even talk about where they might end up in the standings and all that kind of stuff like that uh thank you all for by the way for hitting the subscribe and hitting the bell your pearls of wisdom necklaces are in the pearlocopter on their way to you at the moment hernandez and melissa are working their balls off for you well hernandez is anyways okay uh thank you so pits you know Great time. Thanks for coming in. Oh, by the way, uh, you notice that Ryan's in the Seattle apartment right now as we speak. I went and got Ryan there in the Perlocopter, brought him down. He's on the other. He's in the east wing. So I'm on the other side. The other side. <laughs> yeah. So, Ryan. Ryan, yes. Ryan. Big hockey fan you are. Yep. Big team. Your team's mostly Philadelphia, so we're going to get to Talk about Pittsburgh, sure. which is, is it, so is Pittsburgh like your least favorite team or? Uh, it's a team I can respect. I mean, it's one of those teams you, you kind of have to understand because, I mean, again, it's the team that's across the border. And I mean, when Philly and Pittsburgh meet, it's one of those teams you just have to watch. It's just one of those exciting matchups for me. Right. Yeah, I, it's and, funny. I'm a Philadelphia fan, too, and I live in Alberta, as you do. Mm-hmm. So we almost don't have the same angst against Pittsburgh, do we? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's not like the Battle of Alberta, but I mean, over the years, it's been pretty exciting. It's been respectable, and that's just to the way I like it. Again, it's not a good rivalry if you not don't respect each other, right? I mean, it's yeah. all in fair play. Okay, so we'll get into some of those names and how we, uh, like, what's Crosby going to do this year? So let's get going. Pittsburgh Penguins. Sure. They had a very interesting offseason right off the bat. It was pretty much like Pittsburgh pretty much did the first move of the year that just made you go, wow, I think. And that was, yes, they did pretty much because they did it. I think they made this trade during the playoffs, trading their first or just after Toronto was eliminated from Columbus, but the playoffs were still going on. And they traded their first 15th overall pick to the Toronto Maple Leafs for Kasperi Kapanen. What did you think of that move, my friend? Uh, it was probably a good move, but not the best move that they've made. I mean, Pittsburgh, they need defense, and, I mean, they need a lot of help there. I mean, after getting rid of Shahan and some other players, I think, they just need the help on the defensive side, and it wasn't the smartest move. Yeah, Kasperi can play not bad defense, kind of underrated that way, I agree. Exactly. And, and uh, he, uh, I mean, they're they're in a win-now mode, right? They're not, they don't right. care about tomorrow at all here in Pittsburgh, pretty much. It's their coach, I think, too. I mean, they're coaching Jim Sullivan. He's a very straightforward kind of coach. <laughs> I mean... Um, He's probably the most straightforward coach I've ever seen. I mean, he's very honest with his players, but I mean, he's very straightforward and he demands a lot out of his players. But again, it's what any other coach wants from his players, right? Yeah. I mean, so you're saying like coaching had something to do with, uh, you wouldn't think that uh, Sullivan would be a great coach for a rebuilding team. Right. Exactly. I think he's more of a coach for a team that's already established established yeah and i mean i feel like pittsburgh's not necessarily established anymore i feel like they're falling apart from that 
Yeah, that's kind of what we're getting into here as we look at these trades, right? You trade right. the 15th overall. Uh, um, uh, one of the, the Toronto picked up a guy who I talked a lot about before the draft in a Miro with that Miroff with that 15th pick could make him look pretty silly. Now, as a general manager, if your mandate is to win now and you're still going to keep on rolling with this lineup, I suppose I get the move. It's hard to find a guy like Kasperi Kapanen just on the open market. He's only making $3.2 million. He's only 24 years old. A good young winger who maybe turns out okay. He had a hard time making it up the Toronto lineup. That being said, you're talking about Mitch Marner and, you know, Nylander. The very and, you know, all, depth yeah, team. Yeah, they, well, at least their top six, it's pretty hard to crack that. So right. going to be interesting to see what kind of what happens with that move. Um um, then we go to we'll go well then then it was quiet for a bit sort of uh, they didn't really do all that much draft they didn't have a first like usual I don't believe only had yeah. a second round pick and then they I go all like- funky on us oh wait we forgot the next move that was made we'll talk about that one was uh, not a move they made well yeah they traded Murray to uh, Ottawa. And uh, decided to fly with Tristan Jari. What did you Tristan think of that? Jari. Tristan Jari for the past two seasons. I mean, as a Flyers fan, and I mean, I've been paying attention to his numbers. He's been very consistent. I mean, he's been there, right up there with Hart. And I mean, as a person who respects the rivalry, I can't help but respect that. I mean, Tristan Jari is one of those goalies that you can literally build a team around, and it's good. I think because it's what a lot of teams don't do now. It's like you have a goaltender and you can build a team around a good goaltender yeah it's yeah, one of I those age old age old proposition sorry well, is it actually mean, there's analytics guys that say that you know the last thing you should worry about now is goaltending and i'm with you i don't right? agree with that i don't agree with that at all i mean martin Bur- marty Buran was probably the best franchise goalie and then when he went to st louis it was like a weird move but again, he's done his time in New Jersey, and he's done phenomenal. Like he's got records there that will probably never oh, be broken. I mean, he owns bro, half the record book. Bro, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And then, like, um, if you look at the teams that win the cup, how many times do they not have a great goaltender? I mean, just recently, Tampa Bay with Vasilevsky. Um, if you look at Dallas, if Hudobin wasn't playing out of his head, they never would have beat. Vegas, not a chance, you know. A lot of teams, and, uh, though, now. Sorry? I almost feel like tandem, almost a good goaltending tandem, but it's almost, it's hard to say with the league now, because, I mean, back in the day, I mean, teams used to start a goalie, and he used to start all the time, right? Nowadays, it's almost 50-50, so it's really hard to gauge that, especially with what the team wants and needs from the goaltender. Yeah, I find that kind of odd. You know, remember back in the day, even you don't even have to go that far back. Cam no. Talbot, who just signed with Minnesota, played 72 games with the Edmonton Oilers not that long ago. You know, right. and those days are over. What is it with the goaltenders now? They don't take the abuse like they used to. What is it with the goaltenders now where they can't play that many games because they figure they get too tired? Or is it I think just it's more because a, they're, they're looking for their optimum? Is that maybe it? I don't know. Uh, with Carter Hart, it's different. It's like he's got like a psychological mindset when it comes to goaltenders. It's a psychological mindset. Like you get your mind focused on the game and then oh. you... Yeah. And then, I don't know, it's totally different. I totally like, agree with you. Carter Hart's psychological aspect of his game has been insane. I've talked about it for a very long time, so we'll better get back to Pittsburgh here. Sorry. Tristan Jari, you make a very good point. He seems to have that too. He's not as young as Carter Hart. It's taken no. him a while longer. I watched him. He played for the uh, Oil Kings, uh, our junior team here in Edmonton. And I, when I watched him, I remember I was doing uh, – I was doing videos saying, I just I think that Tristan Jari kid's going to play. At the time, I thought he was going to be a backup or something like that, but he's probably going to play in the NHL. Here he is. He just keeps on improving every year, every year, every year, every year. And now yeah. they're throwing him in the number one role. 
Huh. Now, the Murray trade, you kind of understand it, right? Because they couldn't afford to pay Murray anyway. No, and, not at all. And he struggled the last two years, right? Right. And I think Pittsburgh, they have that standard, though. They're always in that win now mentality where they have to have that standard. Like I said, with Jim Rutherford. Rutherford and like their head coaching, it's just they need that. I don't know. I guess it's just what happens when you build a dynasty, right? You get into that mindset, and then that's you just want to get in the win now mindset every year. Which I think it's the owners probably to admit that's the way they are. They brought in people that just want to win now, win now, win now, win now, and who knows what's going to happen when this falls apart because it's going to fall apart. Going back to Tristan Jari, uh. Now, because they had to do that, though, because they're always against the cap, they have, I find that holes are starting to come up in their lineup. Uh, last year, we Jack Johnson was a hole. It was Jack lineup. Johnson, correct. And uh, there was other holes as well. But Casey DeSmith now comes up from the minors. His numbers in the minors weren't the greatest uh, last year. He did have a decent year for Pittsburgh. Had a 9.16, but last year Wilkes Barre only had a 0. 0.905 and a 2.92, and now he's coming up to be a backup again. Uh, with the shortened season, isn't that a bit of a might be a bit of a problem there with Jari and to Smith? For a goaltending tandem, yeah, I would definitely think that would definitely cause a problem because I mean, with the shortened season now, I mean, what was it, 56 games I think they're starting at now on January yeah, 13th? And it's very condensed, so there's going to be a lot of It's a pass. very condensed game. And it's, I would say if you can actually balance it out, maybe go old school, maybe have one goalie start with 30 games and then maybe have the other one start with 20. Yeah. I, kind of I don't know if I'm all that comfortable with Smith starting 20, even though that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. he's too That's young. the thing. He's, what's, no, he's 29 now. I thought he was young too, but he's actually older than Jari. Uh, he's yeah. he's just, 29? I don't think, I don't think it's, he's, the, I, we'll see. But I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. And then when you consider the fact, we'll go to our next moves. They traded Hornquist to Florida for Michael Matheson <laughs> and Colton Sevier. You're shaking yeah. your head no already, I see. <laughs> yeah, one of those trades, it was like a cap hit at $6 million for Pittsburgh, and it was probably like, that's a big no-no for Pittsburgh because they're already in cap trouble, and it's like, what are you guys trying to do? Like, you guys are trying to get better. But no, it's the win now mentality, I think. And it's But even at be... that, I think you're right. Like, did they really get better with that deal? No. no. I mean I mean, I've looked at their farm team for a couple of years now, and I mean there is a lot of no name players on there, but it sucks to say that because Pittsburgh's a team that oh, they did develop some good players, yeah, but they're almost too straightforward now. It's just win now. And it's they, they don't really have anybody down there that maybe Anthony Angelo possibly could come up and play. Kesper Bjorkfist, I've heard some high things about him. But, I've heard things about him. Yeah, but nothing that really blows your mind that can come up right away, especially on defense. defense exactly. They've got virtually nothing that can come up next year, or should anyways. And then they're so, tied up with a cap hit too. So, so they're stuck with Matheson who had, a, of course, we know, a horrible last two years. Uh, terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible in Florida. <laughs> and yeah. now they're going to try to make something out of him, I guess. I don't know. I hope you see something in him that you can change his game. Because, dude, if he's the same as he was in Florida the last two years, and then to help him out, they go get Cody Cece. Yeah, they almost need, like, another power forward type. Like, I remember when they had James Neal, like, someone that was actually good on offense but who can also cover it on the defensive side and hold their own. Because, again, that's what they need. They're tied up. I mean, losing yeah. Hornquist is only going to hurt them in the long run because, I mean, Hornquist was a guy who could get in front of the net and battle it out. And yeah, he was one of the few on the team that was willing to do that. And now they don't even have that, which I get that they needed to trade. I, I sort of understand they got a little bit of cap space, but 
I think this is going to blow up in their face. Like I said, Cody Cece. Cody Cece. Especially with the shortened season. In Toronto, Cody Cece was a disaster. Absolute disaster. What in the world makes them think that Cody Cece is going to come in and fill your sixth spot? And you've got yeah. nobody after that. No, you got, I think, Juso Rukula and you who you may not know very well are Chad Ruwiddle. They're both seven guys they can fill in a spot. But if there's injuries, this team is – if there's an injury to Marie, to John Marino, who I really like, great move. Uh, Patterson, I really like. Chris Letang, getting up there, but still it's great. And then Letang, yeah. Brian Demelin. If there's an injury to those top four and you got to play any of those guys in your top four, you're, you're in big trouble. You're in trouble, definitely. Because, I mean, Letang is definitely one of those leader type guys. And you, you, you can practically gel it any kind of player around him. And I mean, he can make any good player around him better. Yeah. But let, that's just it. They don't have the leadership on the defensive side. I mean, no, that's what they need. They, Brian Demelin and, and Latang are the leadership. And besides that, none of these guys are known. Well, Pedersen is really good at, for his age. He, he doesn't need much leadership around him. I, I really like John Marino. But they don't have much experience. It's weird. They don't have much experience, and they're bad at the same time. It's a terrible combination. Right. <laughs> so I'm thinking, personally, when, well, then we'll quickly talk about Mark Jankowski. Do you know a lot about him? Came out, had a really bad year in Calgary last Jankowski. year. Jankowski. That name he, sounds familiar. Okay, yeah, he, yeah, exactly. You don't really know who he is, right? Well, guess what? No. He's going to be playing in the third line center slot for Pittsburgh. He uh, was a he was a first round pick by Calgary. They, he's one of those off the board picks. Had a good two years in Calgary, and then last year just did horrible. Then, so here we are talking about almost every guy they picked up. Ivan Rodriguez, they got from Buffalo, couldn't mm-hmm. make it on a on a very thin Buffalo lineup for. You know, the law, the time that he was there, he never really developed the way they wanted to. So basically, they just picked up a whole bunch of reclamation projects, and they must think that Sullivan's going to turn all these guys into gold. Yeah, their coaching is... I mean, Mark Racky's a phenomenal coach, assistant coach, but their head coach. and then Sullivan GM... is a great coach, but you think he can do that much with this lineup, really? No, I think uh, Sullivan is the kind of coach that needs established, well-established NHL players around him. Because, again, he's one of those championship-type, dynasty-type coaches who is used to having those kind of good players in front of him. And when he doesn't have those good players in front of him, he's probably not a good coach. We'll see. I would say that how good of a coach is he if he can't work with a lineup like that? Because great coaches are able to. We are going to see what he can do with this lineup. I'll tell you what. There's probably two coaches in this league that might want to do, might be able to do something in this with this lineup. Do you Maybe, think they need new coaching? I think I don't think it matters unless you're going to get Barry Trotz or Tortorella, or you know some of the you know who are like generational coaches. You might you I don't see this lineup making the playoffs this year, and that's what I'm saying. Do you see them yeah. making the playoffs this year? Not at all. No. Yeah. I, I, Especially I with the shortened season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With the shortened season, that's right. I think the, I think she all starts crumbling this year, my friend. Mm-hmm. It'll be an interesting season for sure, though. I mean, I have never seen NHL hockey like this before in my life, but it's definitely exciting. I mean, for it starts on January thirteenth, and you're saying like, so far, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. it. 56 games, though, that's definitely different, though. Like, it's we've never seen that ever before. <laughs> no, we well, we saw shortened seasons and stuff like that, but we haven't seen it where it's condensed. Condensed. Into, that's the big word here. We're talking about a condensed season, like Montreal picking up uh, Allen to play with Price because you're going to have to play guys 50 50. So, when right. I see a guy like DeSmith who had one good year in the NHL so far, and he's 29, and he's mm-hmm. and he struggled in the AHL last year, 
And now you're going to be asking this kid to almost play 50% of the games, or you're going to put it all on Jari, a 25-year-old kid who, like you said, has great numbers and mm. looks like he's going to be a fantastic goaltender. No doubt about that. But he I don't care how good goaltender. You, well, we're about to find out. Right. And this is the whole thing. You're, that's a huge point. We're going to find out if he's a starting goaltender in a year where you have a condensed season. All of these things just don't add up to me to success, right? Right, exactly. I mean, for a good goalie, I mean, you want to see him at least start a good, consistent maybe 40 games. Because, I mean, I used to watch hockey when they used to start a goalie who played all the way through. Almost, and then. Yeah. Almost all the way through. So it's just like those guys were Iron Man. But I mean, nowadays it's almost like they split it 50 50. But again, like you said, that really condensed season, it's really going to put a bind on things. And I feel like it will put a bind on Pittsburgh. I would have felt a little better if it was actually a full 82 game season and Jari might be able to play 60 games and maybe DeSmith only plays 20. But in this, the way it's going to be, I just can't see Jari playing eighty percent of these games. He, you he said would have you followed to play him for the Oil of Kings, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He played for the Oil Kings. When I How many games there. are the CHL seasons? Or sixty some, yeah, something like that. Yeah. He. Yeah. But mind you, he probably split his time too, right? Oh, uh, he played most of the games there for sure. It's not like he hasn't done played the games before, but playing in the NHL is a different. It's kind totally of, different. It is it's totally totally different. different. It yeah. is, and it's the back to back still, right? Like even if right. he could play that many games, he's not going to be doing it back to back anymore. And uh, so I, sorry, that's how I feel a lot with these other goalies too, because Carter Hart is he's like one of those goalies. Once you start scoring on him, where you start getting in his mindset. That you got him beat. These guys, they're almost got to beat almost every time. It's like, no, you can't beat him that way. It's like, you got to beat him a totally different way than just shooting on these goalies. These players are totally different nowadays. It's not even funny. Like, oh, oh yeah. And that's what makes every sport, even watching Pittsburgh, like, it's just exciting. Philly, like, it's the sports psychology, I almost want to say, but it's not. Yeah, I love the psychology of the game, no doubt about it. It's one of my favorite things about it. I do sports capping for a living, and I nail fill, I nail hockey a lot, like run at 80, 80%. And mm -hmm. uh, um, a lot of it has to do with because understanding the psychological part of the game. Because the great people that, can, people that know who's going to win games know more than just the numbers. They can tell right. by watching a game which team is psychologically where it needs to be at that point. And, uh, yeah, so anyways, boys and girls, we did ourselves a Pittsburgh Penguins gift. Ryan Renault. Freaking... Thank you, Perla, for inviting me. Oh, I loved having you. Give him a big round of applause, everybody. <sighs> awesome. First time ever doing this. Uh, probably a little bit nervous. Maybe not. I don't know. But he did fantastic. A little bit. <laughs> uh, you did great, Ryan. I freaking love you. having you. Thank you Thank for you. You, you. you made me think in a different way that's why we love doing this with people they see things from a different angle i had a view of things and now i have a different view because of you thanks for coming on you were amazing everybody hit the subscribe and the bell and uh remember that uh remember steelflyers.com www.steelflyers.com all sports network it's an amazing website it is very amazing it, guy. it is growing 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 we're going to have every sport, every team, a live feed running through it. It's not just steel, Steelers or Flyers. Steel Flyers is a guy. He started it, and it's the All Sports Network. It's going to be absolutely awesome. That's our full 42%, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.